In the very first episode of the Ahsoka series, we saw a live-action adaptation of Ezra's farewell hologram from the Rebels finale. Basically, this figure is just a version of the series 3 and 4 Ezra that we've been looking forward to getting for a long time. Is this the beginning of us getting the rest of the Ghost crew in their later on appearances? Is this just a one-off? Who knows? But is this a worthwhile pickup? Watch the review, see if it is for you. All right, let's go ahead and take a look at the figure in the box. So this is back to windowed packaging. We finally made it through the storm almost. There's a few plastic-free packagings that haven't actually hit shelves yet, so we're kind of going to get a mix probably for the duration of the year. But nice to finally see a windowed package again. It's about time. So the this is my first look at the Ahsoka packaging too. So this is back to the standard Black Series packaging from pre plastic free but the ahsoka coloring is a very very pale almost gray blue which is really nice so your black series logo up above a big window showing ezra and his accessories off nicely star wars ahsoka ezra bridger lothal in quotes warning four plus hasbro got some cool artwork of ezra on the side of the box with the city of lothal behind him or like the capital city of lothal and then this side features your wraparound window wraparound stripe black series logo down below around back you have the black series logo the artwork of ezra a bio, not about Ezra, but about the show. They seem to be giving the Ahsoka packaging the Kenobi treatment. He's number two in the Ahsoka line. There's a bunch of legal stuff below that with Disney and Hasbro logos, barcodes, more legal stuff. And your hanger tab and window up top, which allows a little bit of light into the box if you're an inbox collector. Kind of makes it stand out more on the shelf. I'm not a loser. I open my toys. So let's go ahead and open it up and see what we're getting here. All right. So here's Ezra out of the packaging. And as always, we'll start by taking a look at the accessories. He comes with his DL-44 pistol, which looks very, very good. I couldn't tell you if this is a new sculpt or if it's reused from one of the many Han Solo models we've had over the years. So uh, I won't even try to speculate where this mold is from. It could be new. It comes in a very dark gunmetal gray color. Looks really good with silver on the barrel. And it's just a very nice-looking gun. I've always liked this style of blaster. He features a trigger hand on his right side, and he holds it very well. He also features a working holster on his right thigh, which it pegs or posts into very nice. Then he comes with his lightsaber. Now, i got to say, I've got some gripes with this, but... Something that I do really like is the shade of green used for the blade. There's something about this. It's very, I don't want to say fluorescent, but it catches the light very well. It makes it look like it has a glow to it. I was just noticing it, you know, while doing figure photography. It catches the light and holds it nicely. And it almost looks like there's a tiny little LED in the base of it, like lighting it up. I mean, it's really nice. So I got to say, I hope they do this more. I like this is the go-to green for now on. If they ever do a different shade of green that doesn't glow like this, I'm going to compare it to this. Now, looking at the hilt, it is completely the wrong hilt for this version of Ezra. So this is the Sabine modified one where it features the shroud around the blade. And that is just not accurate to the source material. It is wrong. And as a reviewer, I have to say it's wrong. So Ezra's saber, removing the blade doesn't have this like dual shroud thing. It's actually basically flat with a little tip that comes out where the blade comes out. Now I wouldn't expect them to have that little like nub tip coming out, but I do wish that this was flat and it's just not accurate. Um, something else that I don't really like is the triangle D ring. Now it, it looks accurate as in it is a triangle D ring in the show, but he features a hook on his belt and the triangle cutout is almost too small for the hook. Like, you really have to work it on there. Now, I'm going to have him with the saber in hand for basically the entirety of my time owning the figure, so that's not really a big deal. But you do have to work it on. It doesn't really hang like most of them do. And then another thing, I feel like they made this accessory with Sabine in mind, who's going to be a little bit of a shorter, a little bit of a skinnier kind of character. This saber hilt, it seems small for Ezra. It's not horrible, but, like, I, I feel like it should have been scaled up a little bit. It, uh, it, it'll it do in a pinch, but, yeah, I'm, I'm not super impressed with the hilt element of this. But the actual blade is very impressive on the saber, I gotta say. Just look at him there. He catches such a pose. So, we'll set the saber and the blaster off to the side for the moment. Let's bring it in and look at the head sculpt. So... 
I'm I am digging the likeness here. It I'm not super familiar with the Ezra actor for the Ahsoka show. I know that we did spoiler alert, but you've had a week. If you're a real fan, you would have by now seen it. We do see Ezra in the ending of episode six, and he's got a way different haircut, and he's got a beard, and so like I, I can see the similarities enough that I'm like, yeah, it's that guy. Um, it it looks like Ezra. Something they did, and it's in the show. It's not like a Hasbro issue is they changed his hairstyle. It's not a buzz cut anymore. It's like a really tight comb back thing, which looks all right, but I don't know. I, I, I kind of wish they would have gone the animated buzz cut style, but that's okay. Really nice details of the Inquisitor lightsaber scar on his cheek. And really nice blue eyes poking through. and It just looks right. It looks the part. Something I'd like to compare to also. So when Hasbro did their Rebels Black Series figures, you know, a couple years back, and they reissued them, um, they didn't have live action actors to go off of. So they tried to make the animated characters, you know, like maybe this is what they'd look like if they were real. And I, I gotta say like putting, you know, the, the interpretation next to the actor, this doesn't look bad. Like they, they, they obviously look like different people. Yeah. But like, I look at these both and I see Ezra. So I, I think, I think I kind of like these, you know, it looks like a, it's an acceptable continuation is what I guess what I'm trying to get to. So I did want to do our black series Ezra's comparisons, but from other than the hair being different and the lightsaber being the completely wrong hill and underscaled at that, the rest of the outfit does look like a relatively faithful interpretation from our season three and four look. So he kind of features that yellow and orange shoulder pad combo, and then the orange shirt with the red belly kind of patterned in there. It looks really good. A little tiny bit of weathering on that chest armor, too. A little silver scuffs here and there. It looks really good. Spinning him around back. You don't have any scuffs on the back. No real paint details to the back, but that's all right. Goes down to his green gloves with yellow fingertips, and then his communicator on that wrist. Looking excellent. Nice brown pants. He kind of has these... I don't know, it's weird. He has, like, the straps going down for that holster, but then he also has, like, straps on this side that don't go to anything. Definitely a weird costume design. And then he has the, uh, like, the boot armor. And then the boots coming underneath. And just... It captures the look of Ezra really well, I gotta say. And to go into articulation, I will say this guy has some awesome articulation. He features a double barbell neck, allowing him to look that far up, that far down. He can rotate and pivot to a crazy degree. His arms come up to a T-pose where there's butterfly joints, 360 at the shoulder, with single-jointed elbows that go way past 90 and rotate, 360 at the wrist with the left one hinging in and out, the right one hinging up and down. Features that like waist ball joint, which allows him to crunch that far forward. That far back, and then you get some side-to-side -side movement and rotation. His legs can kick that far out, and then they can go that far forward. Not much back. There is upper thigh rotation, although they're phasing that out on some of these new figures, and I don't mind that, because he has the single joint of knees that go to 90 and then swivel at the knee. That knee swivel kind of negates the thigh swivel, so like, I'm okay with losing that seam there. So, not that it affects this one, but just a Hasbro commentary that I'm going to slip in here. And then the feet point basically straight down, really far forward. And there's a forward-facing pin for Rocker, allowing you to get some pretty decently wide stances with both feet flat on the ground. To do some comparisons here, I'm going to bring in Kid Ezra. Just to show you, obviously, he has gotten taller. A standard six inch tall Imperial Stormtrooper. The Rebels stylized Grand Admiral Thrawn. This is the Red Box release. I never did go for the Archive one. And it's her show, so she may as well make the cut. Here is Ahsoka from the Mandalorian and Grogu and Ahsoka three pack. So, all in all, I feel he scales pretty nicely with what we're working with here. So, end of the day, what do I think of this Ezra Bridger? Honestly, I really like the figure. I cannot ignore the lightsaber gripes. But outside of that, it's awesome. That shade of green for the saber is awesome. Just the hilt is totally wrong. 
And the rest of everything here is amazing. I really like the likeness of the character. The outfit translated great. I really, in general, do not like baggy orange jumpsuit early seasons, Ezra. So seeing this outfit make its way into the Ahsoka series, even if it is just via that farewell hologram that they play, I'm glad that Hasbro said, hey, that's reason enough to make this action figure, because it's a really good one. This makes me really, really want the rest of the Ghost crew in their Season 3 and 4 outfits. I admit, Zeb is the same, just with the shoulder pads removed. Hera doesn't really change. But Kanan's outfit is a must-update, and Sabine has a different outfit, you know, different paint job every season. I mean, I need every Rebel's Sabine. So Hasbro, get on it. No one wants Hammerhead. No one wants Cantina Band people. We want Rebels. We want clones. We want all this newer stuff, and, you know, we can step away from OT. Give us some of that. Give us some Rebels love. We need that masked Kanan Jarrus. So get on it. Thank you. We'll see those soon, I hope. And thank you guys for watching. It means a lot that you did. If you enjoyed, leave a like, comment, subscribe. you got to be subscribed to get in on that Darth Maul giveaway. I'll catch you next time. Until then, may the Force be with each and every one of you. Bye. <laughs>